I'd love to. If we can jump to 49, this kind of comes into play here because remember these, these Israelites are in Babylon and it really stinks. <laughs> They're not liking this. And so chapter 49, um, let's look at verse 4. So we're speaking to Israel. Israel's kind of described as a servant here, and Israel over in exile is kind of speaking um, as this person. So verse 4, then I said, or, you know, collectively Israel over there in exile, then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Right, And, and they, they have this complaint, has this all been for nothing? How many times have we asked that? Am I going through all this for nothing? What's going on here? Why won't you get me out of this mess? And then in verse 5, the Lord responds, now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And then the Lord says again in verse 6, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. And if I can paraphrase that a little bit, he's saying, it would be too light of a thing, it would be too easy of a thing just to get you guys out of trouble. You know, <laughs> he could have done that any time. Um, he, could, he could snap his fingers, get them out of exile, set them back in a beautiful paradise back in Jerusalem, and things would be great. But he's saying, that would, that's, that's too light, that's too little of a goal right here. So look what he says in the middle of verse 6. I will also, in addition to getting you out of trouble, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. In other words, it's a turn lemons into lemonade sort of a situation. He's saying, hey guys, remember the Abrahamic covenant. You're supposed to bless all families and nations of the earth with the blessings of this gospel, right? So currently you're surrounded by Gentiles and you're in captivity. That kind of stinks. But as long as you're there, let's remember what the purpose of Israel was in the first place. Share the gospel. Use my redemption of you to share these things with the nations right here so that others can have salvation and come to know about me as well. Um, and I wonder how often the hard things we go through, maybe part of it is for our own growth, to be sure, and some of our the bad things we go through are our own mistakes. But can the Lord use turn those into redemptive experiences, opportunities for us to grow in maybe empathy or understanding, or to meet people we otherwise wouldn't have met, opportunities for us to share and bless other people? I think the Lord has a wonderful way of taking things that look like tragedies and turning them into triumphs, into opportunities to bless more people. And that's a wonderful message right here that these people can use and, and maybe make some sense of the hard thing that they're going through. The Lord really has a big picture in his mind, and this is all going to be part of, in the end, a wonderful redemptive story.